Today I show you how to put together a few of the items from the pet food kit that Anne from Paper Minis sent to me. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy these projects are to do. Well, I decided I'm going to do another one of the paper mini kits this week that Anne get, gifted me a while back. Mainly because I've had a really, 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 really busy week and I just didn't have time to come up with a different project for you guys. I apologize for that. But somebody requested seeing the pet food one made. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to make some of these pet foods. And normally I would be using a hole punch to punch out these round lids, but I can't find my hole punch today. So we're going to skip the hole punch part and I'll show you how to do it the old fashioned way with a pair of scissors. So, and does give you directions and be sure and read those, especially if you've never done these before. But this set, I'll read you what it has. It has four cans of dog food, four cans of cat food, a goldfish, goldfish shaker food of food flakes, a box of dog treats, a pouch of dog treats, two pouches of cat treats, a box of bird seed, and a box of rabbit pellets. So we are going to work on this. Now if you've watched any of my other tutorials on Anne's kits, you know that I do mine slightly different than she does, mainly because I've been doing these for many, many years and I know what works for me. After you've been doing them for a lot of years, try it my way, try it her way, and see what works best for you. You'll find some steps that just work better for the way you work. So we are going to start by very carefully cutting our pieces. And I'm only going to cut out one at a time here. I'm going to use the back side of this mat since I'm filming. This is a really dirty, nasty mat. It's an old um, cu fabric cutting mat. This is... I think probably the first of the uh, mats I bought for rotary cutting fabric for quilting. When it got kind of messed up and banged up and it was really too small for using there, I moved it to crafting and bought myself a bigger, nicer one to use for my sewing. So that's why I use this. It's got hot glue on it, it's got paint on it, it's got for some reason spider webs on it. I guess I had it tucked in behind something. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I've got the edge of my ruler where I'm not going to cut through anything important. And I'm going to cut this page in half, close to where it was folded. I'm going to do that simply to make it easier to handle. I am going to start with one can, and I don't think I'm going to even put together the whole kit today. I'm going to do a can of dog food and a box of dog biscuits and a dog treat. I think I may not do the others at all, we'll see. Um, but those will give you an idea of how to do everything. Now, Anne does recommend a metal straight edge, and that's if you have one, that's great. Especially for videos, I tend to use a clear one so that we can all see better. I do end up having to replace this clear plastic uh, ruler because it's not made for this. Right. And I cut a little bit off because I can't get my head where it really is easy to see here. Oops. Since it's such a short spot there. Um, I'm actually going to let's see if I can get this picked up. That's about right. Uh, scissors. My scissors have disappeared got these little bird shaped scissors. I love these for doing paper crafting. And yes, I know they're embroidery scissors. Someone pointed that out on one of my 18 inch doll videos. I love these for doing paper crafting. As you can see, they've got a really, really long skinny blades. They're really nice for doing any kind of paper crafting work. I am going to cut out my dog food lids and then I'm going to show you another pair of scissors that I really like for doing paper crafting. Right, 
Now, I would normally see if I have a round hole punch to do these with, but like I said, I couldn't find my hole punch. This is a pair of cuticle scissors. They're the curved kind. I love these for cutting any place I need to cut round shapes. Always move the paper, not the scissors. Just slowly close your scissors as you move your paper. I find that with the round, the curved scissors, my round shapes are a little bit smoother. There. And I'm not going to fast forward or anything on this. I want you guys to see how long it does take to cut this out and to do it because these kits are really not difficult to do. In the blog post, there will be a direct link to Anne's site and I will try my best to put a link to the kit. Sometimes those links don't work very well for me though. I occasionally have trouble getting those links to work. So I will at least get you as far as Anne's site. Now, if I didn't move pens, I'm going to have to turn the camera off and find a couple of things and I'll be right back. Okay, this was off on the other side of the table. And this is a really important tool if you're going to make, whether it's dog food or any printies that are supposed to be metal cans. Get a set of these uh, metallic Sharpies. I have, this is a silver one because this is the color that goes with this. I also have a gold one and a copper one and a couple of other colors. I believe you can get gold and maybe gold and silver together as just the two of them, I think is how that works. Um, they last a long time providing you cap them and they really make this look a lot better. So what I'm going to do, and it's hard to see on this little tiny piece, but I'm working, I'm holding the pen on the back side of the lid. Always work from the back side of your printy. And I'm just going around the edge. I work from the back side in case my pen slips. That way I'm making, because see, I'm, I'm my pen is sliding off a little bit. That's okay, as long as you're working from the back. If you work from the front, you'll have those marks on the surface of your project. And by the way, Anne does give extra lids for this project. There are extra lids printed right on the sheet. So don't stress out if you mess up one set. I don't, I didn't see how many, I didn't count to see how many there were, but there are extras. I love Anne's kits because they are on wonderful paper. The print quality is really good. The scale is wonderful. And Anne is just a delightful lady. I have become good, I consider her to be a good friend. And all through miniatures. All right, now I'm going to take the label. I'm going to do the same thing, again, working from the back. I'm not going to do the ends of this sheet, however. I did not get that cut right. There's a little tiny, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a little tiny edge that tore a little bit there. there. This will ma make it look like your silver can edge is there and not like it's a roll of paper. Now personally, I don't seal these because these are supposed to look like they're wrapped in paper. Remember the labels on pet food are paper. Alright, close the pen. Pick up our pieces. We are going to use two types of glue on this. I'm going to get my, this is just a piece of parchment paper from the kitchen. I'm going to put my lids off to the side. I don't want them yet. Now I have a one of these glue sticks. Excuse me. This is a disappearing purple glue stick. That's my preference. Because when the when the glue is wet, it's purple. When it's dry, it's clear. And I forgot one important step. Before we put glue on this, we want to roll it around something round. This is just a pen that's sitting on my desk. Don't even know where this came from. I'm going to roll this up so it's quite small. But if you roll it around something round first and then roll it up, 
you'll have much better time trying to get this right. Now line up without glue on this. I'm going to line this up. Come on. I should have a slightly smaller dowel, but I don't see it. I'm not going to worry about the that part. I want to... There's a line here where the label ends. I want to take this end of the label and I want to get an idea of, yeah, that looks about right. Okay. So I'm going to unroll just past that point. I'm only putting glue about the length of where the label is printed on the right side. Now be careful that you don't glue this too skinny. Trying to bring this around. This is a little on the fiddly side and normally, like a lot of times, I would normally have my head right where your view is because you guys are getting a much better view of this than I am. There. I've got that lined up as best I can with the end of the printing. Just barely overlap the label print. Now, I want to cap this glue. I want to take a quick scan. I see where my glue went. I have some Tombow Multi, uh, Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue. I love this for doing paper projects where I can't really clamp them. Oops, this is attempting to not stay glued. I have to hold this just a second. There we go. Working on my parchment, I'm going to put that down. Now the only downside to this glue is if it oozes out, it will remain somewhat sticky. So we don't want to use very much of this. Just getting a little bit out on my paper over there so that I know it's flowing. The reason I like this glue is that sticky is also there now and it will, it will stay put. There we go. Now we're going to turn this one over. Let's turn this one over and do the same thing. Everything is sticking to my fingers. I rolled my dog food can just a little bit small, but after the glue dries, I'll show you how to fix that. And then we'll use the pen too. This glue is almost empty, so it's... Come on. Oh, I've got some glue over here. I really need to remember to buy more of this glue. Now we have a can of dog food. Make sure your lid is covering the edges of your paper and set it aside to dry. So, let's see, I'll put this where I don't misplace it. And now I'm going to cut out, let's cut out the pepperoni. I think I'll do this with my scissors. I think it will be a little easier. We are going to, and this one we're going to trim once it's all glued, but we're gluing this in two steps. Just take your time in cutting out so that you cut nice and straight. score today, I'm using just a double-ended knitting needle. It's a rather small one. I don't know the size. And there's a point where the, la the front and back labels meet the bottom gusset. And you'll be able to see that. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but in person it shows up pretty well. 
we're going to score right there on both sides. We're not, I don't score this one in the middle. Then we're going to fold back. And then squeeze it together so that those meet. And then make sure you've got everything nice and straight. Don't worry if your edges are not perfect at this point. Pull my paper back for gluing. And this time we're going to run, as soon as I get my glue flowing, okay, there we go. From over, we've got, if you look at your, your paper, from the back side, you've got kind of a mountain in the middle. You've got a valley fold, a mountain fold, and a valley fold. And then you've got a front and a back. You can start at one of those little valley folds, up over that mountain, and all the way to the open end. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're not going to put glue in the middle. I'm going to let that sit for just a minute while I grab a couple of clips. I actually bought some smaller ones the other day. These are little binder clips. They come from the dollar store. I get these at Dollar Tree. I got really tiny ones the other day. For these, you get this size, you get 12 for a dollar. When they come, they're, they're done like this, so just fold the little flaps back. I knew I needed more small ones for doing the, these little tiny pieces. All right. Get everything lined up. Don't worry if the top is not lined up perfectly as far as size. We are going to trim. We're also going to trim the edges. Put your binder clips right on, oops, right on the edges and let that glue dry. We have one more I'm going to do on camera and that is this little thing of milk bone. And I think I am going to cut it out also just with scissors. So follow the lines. And obviously like the bird seed is going to go together just like this box. There's kitty treats that will go together just like the other treat bot bag did. All the cans go together just like I showed you on that can of dog food. So you, you're just repeating the same process. I'm actually going to do some scoring before I go any further, I think. This needs to fold in a couple of places. And this is much easier to score before you cut it out. Again, using my knitting needle. And I'm going to turn this around so I've got the majority of the paper underneath the ruler. It keeps it a little more stable. Score right at the edge of the label printing. Now we're going to turn and we're going to score the top and the bottom. Don't push too hard this paper. You could actually cut through with the knitting needle just like any other scoring tool. Be very careful when you score things. All right, now that's scored. Now I'm going to fold along all those fold lines while it's still here. All right, now I'm going to finish cutting it out. You can score it after you've cut it if you prefer that. I just prefer to score first. I find it's easier. And we're just notching these out. And I decided today not to, like I think I said earlier, I'm going to let you see exactly how long this takes me. I'm not fast forwarding. I'm not turning the camera off. I want you to see how simple and easy these are to do. I 
And someone mentioned to me the other day, they love it, the fact that when I make a mistake, I don't cut that out. I just show you how to fix it. And that's it's because that's what I'm here for. I want you guys to be successful. And if I make a mistake, chances are somebody else is going to make the same or a similar mistake. So why not show you how to fix it, how to get yourself out of trouble? That's one of the reasons I really hate when people fast forward their videos because they may be... You don't know what they've done then to fix things. If you're after a faster video, probably don't want to watch mine. My whole concept is I want you to feel like you're sitting across the table from me in my craft room. All right, this is all cut out. We're going to put glue along this line first. these little white tabs in on the bottom first. Do I, have, I didn't put my beads out here. If I still had my beads out here, one thing that I do sometimes when I do these is I will actually put just a couple really small beads inside. Then the box rattles like it's got actual dog biscuits, but I put the beads away and I really don't. I'm being lazy today. I've had a really long week. I'm really tired. And I really don't feel like running to the other end of the house to grab the box of beads. I think you've seen me do that before anyway. Come on, glue. Oopsie. Too much glue there. Oh, okay. Easy way to fix that. Take your tool that you were using to score with, or a toothpick. This is why Ann tells you to use a paintbrush to apply your glue, but I've never liked doing my glue that way. Okay. Now we're gonna let this glue dry, and when all our glue is dry, I'll come back and I'll show you how to finish off that piece. All right, so my glue is pretty much dry. Um, we've got our little dog biscuit box, our little can, and let's go ahead and trim this out because I didn't get this cut quite. Does it need trimming? Actually, it doesn't need trimming. If you do have a big edge sticking out, just trim it down with your scissors and then recolor it with your pen. Let's finish this one up. So, what I like to do after that glue has time to set, <laughs> trim this off. So it's got a nice edge that doesn't have any white showing. Just trim it there. Let's see if I can get this open enough to... Let's see if I can get this open. I should have opened my glue first, didn't think of that part. And then just put just a drop of glue here. I'm going to have to go find some other glue because that glue is empty now. But there we have it. So we have, a can, that's how you do the can of dog food, the box of biscuits and the little package of treats, and all the rest are done the same. The cans are all done the same. The boxes are all done like, the, like that box. More boxes, um, more cans, and the pouches are done exactly the same way. So I hope you enjoyed watching me put this kit together. Whoops, I am not under camera with that stuff. There we go. You can look at that rather than a blank screen. I hope you enjoyed watching this kit go together. It is a fantastic little kit to put together, just like all of her kits. And I really want to extend my thanks to Anne again for being so generous and giving me the kits. And I want to thank you guys for going over to Anne's site and letting her know that you saw me make her stuff. 
it means a lot to both of us to know that we are getting traffic from each other. So thank you, and thank you, Anne. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.